Hello, I'm doing another water chain today. This time in preparation for moving some fish upstairs that are long overdue for coming up. So let's get this over with. So I'm just doing a larger than normal water change. I'm gonna take it down to about 50%, get some new water in there get a nice fresh environment for the new guys to come up whenever I've done a water change before with my discus they always get a bit of a bit antsy when you do a water change they're expecting things I don't know if they're nervous or if they're excited or whatever it is but it changes things up a little bit so that's what I want to do before I introduce some new fish to just change things up a little bit get them out of the comfort zone so they won't straight away attack it or start pecking at it and bullying it or saying who are you they'll all be it's re-establishing their own territories and getting used to the the big water change so we'll get that going what i've done is i've just got the the hose here which is siphoning out i'll let that run i've just changed out the sump water as well i'm just refilling that separately yeah so everything's looking good in there Let's get this finished off and then we'll go down and get the new fish. Now we fill back up. Alexa, turn on the pump. Okay. And that's how we do water changes. Pack all the stuff away. This is the view out my back garden, so we can sit and watch the football for a minute. Through the trees. Anyway, back to the fish. So down in the fish room, we've got these two discus in here, which one in the back hiding and one at the front here. We've got a cobalt blue and a blue turk, I think. These were my sacrificial lamb fish, so if you've heard me talking about quarantine before and how important that is, check out up here, up here, wherever it may be. Check out the video on the basics of discus. Um, but I've used these as my quarantine fish to check that two fish from separate suppliers can live well together healthily. So these two fish are completely healthy. Um, I've already moved all the other fish back together. These two were just living in this tank because I never quite got around to it. So this tank ultimately is going to be my puffer fish tank and the black ghost knife fish. I'm going to get these discus out of here just now and move them upstairs to the display tank. So the first job is I need a bucket, dusty bucket, siphon some of the water out of this tank into the bucket, net the fish, take them upstairs, net them out into the display tank. Simple as that until we get to the netting part, so I'll go on with that now. transport them upstairs so I don't need a lot. Um, in terms of netting I've got my bunch of nets here. I'm going to use the two bigger ones and hopefully use one net to steer the fish into the other net but we shall see how it goes. So I'm just move some stuff around here. Oh, 
diamond. Oh, well, who knows? Not as easy as I thought it was going to be. So, that leaves this tank with the Black Ghost Knife Fish and a Tomati Cichlid. They're going to stay in there and we're going to try keeping the Fahaka Puffer with them. Um, but I want to rescape the tank first. I'm going to put some sand down for the Fahaka and put a little bit of lightscaping in there. And some places to hide and book up lines of sight and that kind of thing. But that'll be in the next video. Now we'll get these uh, discus upstairs and into the display tank. Okay, got these fish in a bucket. Got a big tank for them to go into it. Let's do this. Just need to move the lights. So I've just finished the water change. Um, Everything's nice and healthy and clean in there. The fish are fine, they're moving around. Moving the lights makes it a bit darker to introduce the fish. Um, I'm hoping that the water change will have disrupted things enough that uh, they'll accept the new fish coming in. It's worked for me in the past, so I've no reason to think it won't work again. So let's go on with it. All I'm going to do is simply net them out, plop them in. There he goes, straight in. Happy as Larry. The water is almost identical to the water that they've come from, so I'm not expecting any problems. Same temperature, same parameters all around, really. There's the smaller of the two ready to go in. Pop them in. And he's happy. We'll probably go for a little bit of a hide, but let's have a look. There they are, just off in that corner. Not very good with the reflections of the light, I'm afraid. Yeah, so they'll just stay down there for a little while, I'm sure. But they'll be happy enough soon. All the other fish, for some reason, deciding to congregate over here. But we'll leave them to settle in. Come back in a few minutes and hopefully all will be well. Okay, so we're about 10 minutes in. This guy is one of them. Getting checked out by the regulars. But he seems happy enough. The other guy get him in focus. Looks to have taken a bash to his eye. So I'm not sure that if that was in the net or putting him in. But something we'll need to keep an eye on. But I'm sure a few extra water changes thrown in that will clear right up. As you can see the other eye is fine. But other than that little bash, he looks to be okay. Not clamping his fins too much or anything like that. So, everyone's in, everyone's happy-ish. Um, one with a little injury to his eye, but that'll clear up, I think. So, let's get them fed and see how they behave with that. And um, for tonight's dinner, the delectation is uh, a beef heart cube, which is a beef heart mix, and a couple of blood worm cubes. I don't normally feed blood worms, I'm not a big fan of them for discus, but there's no getting away from the fact that the fish love them and it stimulates the feeding, I think. So, with some new fish in there, get some nice blood worms in there, get them happy. They might not be the most nutritious of foods, but the beef heart's in there as well, so hopefully, we'll pick some of that up too. So, let's get it in. In and on it straight away. Coming down for it 
straight away, but they will be shy. Springier than normal, not sure what that is. Gamma blister packs of discus food. Not again, not normally a fan of the the blister packs um, because, well, if you test them for yourself, you'll notice you leave one out to defrost. It's usually like eighty percent water, but these ones, um, very low water count, and they will defrost test. So I was quite pleased with them, and the fish seemed to like them, and the ingredients were good, so you can't really complain with that. Well, I think I've seen them all had a peck at something. Probably just leave them to get on with that in their own good time. So, new guys are in, I'd like to say I'm going to need to keep an eye on one of them, make sure that eye clears up in a few days, uh, I'm sure it will, looking at it, it's, it looks like a bit of a bash. Um, everything else in the tank's doing really well, the plants are growing out of control really, I need to cut some of them back, but I'm kind of liking the, almost like a carpeting effect this is giving us here, it's not a carpeting plant, technically, well, traditionally. It's doing pretty well, uh, so I'm kind of just letting this go. I like the jungle look on the floor. It does trap some of the crap up quite well, so you need to get in and give it a good old uh, siphon when you're doing your water changes. But other than that, everything's quite happy. I added the stair by Corridor, as you saw earlier, um, a couple of weeks ago. They're fine. Um, up to the full complement of discus that I want in this tank. Well never the full compliment, maybe a couple more soon. Yeah, but looking well and I'm happy with it. Um, as always, thank you for watching. If you've not been here before, click on that subscribe icon down below and give me a like, give me a comment, say hello, all that jazz, and I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.